hello guys and welcome back to the channel so now guys i am doing this video because we don't get enough of this sort of a uh, narration and by the way this narrative of this video is uh it captures the very essence of my view of nigeria and nigerians this is how i see the average nigerian and this is really who the average nigerian uh is and this very much in contrast to the global uh, view, the global perception of who a Nigerian is. So the story that I'm about to bring you now describes, in essence, an average Nigerian. And by the way, I've had a direct experience of this as well, which I shall tell you uh, at the tail end of the video. But first, guys, I bring you this. Nigerian man hailed as good man after he returned a hundred thousand naira that fell from a woman's bag so this is the headline that we're contending with nigerian man hailed as a good man after he returned a hundred thousand naira that fell from a, a woman's bag so even before we get into the narrative i already have issues with uh, the headline so it should why, why should he be hailed as a good man for handing over money that fell from somebody's bag this is somebody something that you should do as a matter of course this is just what you do isn't it so it doesn't then qualify you as a good man it's just what should naturally happen but then of course not just nigeria but the world that we are living uh, now doing this sort of act now is not being de de uh, described as what defines you as a good man so let's get into it a Nigerian man is being hailed as a good man after he returned a hundred thousand naira that fell from a woman's bag whilst she was on a bike in Anambra state. Kimberly Izeke narrated how he was driving when he saw a bike rider speed past him with a passenger. Almost immediately, a nylon fell from the bag. He said he picked it up and noticed it was money. The following day was a market day in his town. He went to the market making inquiries about the bike guy who then later directed him to the woman who owns the money. He said the woman was so grateful that she tried to reward him for his kindness but he wouldn't accept any reward because he did it for God. Facebook users have left comments to praise him and call him a good man. Narrating what transpired, Kimberly wrote, I don't know that people will still be careless with money at this point of hunger and poverty in Nigeria. Yesterday, 20th of April, I was driving home to my countryside when a bike or car man passed me. Not up to a pole, I saw a black nylon that have a small opening. I then saw a few 1K notes. I stopped and picked it up. Then when I got home, I opened it and counted it was a hundred thousand naira. Because yesterday was my town's market day, Nkuo Igbo, and these women do not know what lockdown is. Though I do see the back man, I don't really know his name, his number or where he's from. I started looking for him, describing to people who I was looking for, until someone who knows gave me his phone number. I called him and asked him a few questions. He told me that the woman he was carrying at that time is his customer. He called her Mama Ebube or Mama Semi that she deals on red oil gallons. He further said that she was looking for her money and ordered him to take her back to her town, Equolobia, to check if she left it there. I told him to give her my number. He said why. I told him I picked some money after they overtook me in the morning and no one was coming from front or back so I guessed she is the owner. Not up to five minutes I started receiving calls from different numbers. I told them to come to Our Lady of Fatima Church and call me. In less than 30 minutes she, her husband, two of her neighbors and two more people came. So when I went there after much verification questions again, as I did on the phone earlier, her answers were very accurate on how the money was kept and set up by denominations. I handed the money over to her. She busted into tears 
and gave me 5k. I said, do not worry. She gave me the whole money. I said, take how much you think is good. I said to her, please ma, I do not need any reward. What I did is for God. She started shouting and singing and her shouting started attracting passers-by. So I left. This is a very critical time for every common Nigerian. But do not let the condition change who you are or what you decide in life. Always believe that yours will come in a more better way because the best will come with tomorrow. So first of all, the first thing to say is to applaud this guy. And I uh, recount slightly how I started and I agree that this is a good guy, especially in an environment like Nigeria where to feed is almost a task. Uh, in fact, it is a task for most people and then some person just suddenly happens on a hundred thousand naira and his instincts are not to keep it for himself but to seek out the owner and hand it over. So this I applaud. I applaud it but then of course I would do exactly the same thing that this guy did and I'm pretty certain that every single uh, uh, subscriber of mine listening to this video in fact every single one of my subscribers I'm pretty certain would do exactly what this guy did and I'm uh, assuming that a good 80 to 90 percent of my subscribers are Nigerians so this is why I started off by saying that this is not an uncommon thing for a Nigerian to do it is in fact actually common for a Nigerian to do. So this is why we're still always alarmed when we hear wrongdoing because it is not our expectation that wrong will be done. So now I said I had a personal story to tell that ties in with the narrative of this um, video. So the last time I went to Nigeria, which wasn't that long ago, I uh, unwittingly forgot my uh, wallet at the airport which had obviously some foreign currencies in it uh, and I forgot it and I also forgot uh, a phone I left it behind at a desk I think I was uh, getting money to get a trolley and then I had to put some stuff down to then carry back you know when you're locked up in that, that chaos that is the airport of the Nigerian system uh, anyway unwittingly I left then my wallet and a phone uh, on that desk. So anyway, I was picked up and then we left. So now when we got home and all whatnot and had uh, settled and whatever, whatever, and I was looking through my things and settling that, and I noticed that the phone was missing and then also that wallet was missing. And by the way, it was a new wallet. So I had just uh, I moved some money into it to break the wallet in. So it wasn't really all of the monies that I had on me that I had in that wallet. It's just uh, a bit of money just to break the wallet in. And then that phone, of course, was just some phone that I needed to get a Nigerian SIM in just to be able to be contacted by the people that were, you know, the, the setup. But anyway, I had surrendered it to God. So uh, a, a week went and then a few days later, and uh, you know, it, it was recording in my head again. And then just had the thought one night that, no, there's a SIM card on that uh, phone. So why didn't I phone that SIM card? Because of course I'd made the assumption that the wallet and the phone was stolen, you know? So I'd made that assumption. So I saw, I said, oh, so, okay, there's a SIM card uh, 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 in, in that uh, phone, on that phone. So why don't I phone that number? And then if it gets picked up, then I have contact with whoever is in possession of my property. So I then, uh, phoned that number and it rang and it rang and then yeah but it wasn't picked so i phoned it a few more times and then it was eventually picked and then it was picked up by a lady i said who would that you know the usual confrontational uh, nigerian tone so i went in aggressively you got my phone blah 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 she said calm yourself down uh i i'm i'm at this place this is my office and this phone was found and it was handed in at the office. I said, which office? And then she said, of, at the airport. So I said, okay, I will come down and then I'm expecting to uh, pick up my properties. So I then made my way to the airport and then lo and behold, I met with a lady who then took me to her boss who had locked all my properties away in their uh, safe 
uh, hoping that I would have enough of a uh, mental uh, rigor to phone that number and then via that number. I be, anyway, to cut a long story short, they handed me my wallet and my phone. So, contrary to popular belief, not all Nigerians are scammers are 419 and with indeed the vast majority of Nigerians are exactly like this guy in this uh, video now and the lady that I'm describing you are the ladies that I'm describing to you at the airport. So this is a very common thing uh, for, for, for Nigerians to do. Uh, look, you dropped your money. Look, you dropped that. And then somebody will run after you and hand it to you. So yes, if you fall into the hands of the touts, then of course the touts will uh, do whatever it is that uh, the touts do. They will take the money and use it to go and help themselves to or go go for the night or whatever so that that happens by the way in any country in the world as well but essentially and fundamentally this guy is a good representation of what the average nigerian is because the average nigerian is an honest person conversations in the comment section what is your take on the average nigerian is really where i am headed to with this uh, video come share thoughts uh, a lifestyle type a story a departure from politics but nevertheless an important uh, thing to document so come share thoughts about good doing uh, within the Nigerian space with me in the comment section have you ever come across a do-gooder or are you yourself a do-gooder have you done good to a random stranger come share thought about all this with me in the comment section but before you do that Click on the red subscribe button so it turns grey. Bell button notifies you every time I drop a new video. Then come tell me what uh, good deeds you have done or had done to you in the past in the comment section, especially within the Nigerian space. So I'll leave you here. Carry this conversation on within the comment section. But here, I say, peace.